Tilo, what's p- We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live today. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is Above Me, the, um, this is the live channel. Uh, if you do happen to miss a live, this is where any highlights and things of that nature will be. Um, don't forget, let me get unblocked. Don't forget, we do got merch. Yeah, get me. My bad. Uh, we also got the Patreon. We post here Monday through Friday. No Saturday, no Sunday, man. No, no, no. Uh, this is a brief interthing of whatever everything we got on there, man. Uh, and to check those out, man, just check the um, description. I'm, I'm so focused on this. This is Britain's knife crime crisis. How to end the violence epidemic. I, like, everybody posts this type of stuff like they really want to end the violence. But they just could but like post this for clickbait because you know we know the violence never will end. There's never it's never gonna end. The only way people will stop carrying knives and guns is if you get caught with them. It's a life sentence. That's the only way that's the, that is ever gonna stop. <laughs> if you get caught with a knife or gun, life sentence. Period. You gotta have steeper consequences. That's the only way it's gonna stop. There's no, other, there's no other way. That is serrated. That. Yeah. You wouldn't want to get stabbed with that, would you? Is that a machete? Yeah, that's a machete. This is a nasty piece of work. You don't get any easier at all. And, uh, you have to try and be strong like every single day. It does kill you. What channel is this? My bad. I got to say the channel, man. This is from Joe. This three years ago. 2020? Salute. Let me hit that like button. Continue. It's hard. Wow. My God. Look at that. I feel properly disturbed by this. I got convicted of GBH and possession of offensive weapon. When you have it, you feel like invincible. I'm Rosanna Allen Khan, doctor, mother, and member of parliament for Two Team. I've been meeting people directly affected by Britain's continuing knife crime crisis. This is Tooting, South London. My constituency, my home. In June 2019, a local young man, 18-year-old Shayon Evans, was stabbed to death. I'm here at his memorial to grieve another young life lost and to try and understand how this kind of violence keeps on happening in Britain. Shayon's cousin spoke to me after the service. My mum just... I'm not even going to say nothing about nothing, but y'all seen it. She called me and went, oh, have you heard the news? And I was like, what news? And she just was silent. And I just knew then that something really bad had happened. And they opened the tent and you couldn't see him, but you could just see all the blood. And there was so much blood. And my cousins were convinced that it wasn't blood. They're like, oh, that's too much blood. That can't be. It has to be. He's like a red jumper. And I'm trying to say to them, like, no, like, that is, that's him. I expected that I was gonna lose someone in my family. I've lost so many, like we've lost friends and so many of my cousins have been stabbed and so on. That's what really broke my heart, that I realized then it was a shock, but also it was kind of like, well, how could I have expected better? I see this on the news every day. Why did I think I would be so blessed that this wouldn't happen to my family? So how many people do you know, you personally know of, in your wider circle, your family, your friends, who have been stabbed? I couldn't count. It would take, I'd have to sit and think about it. There's no way of knowing how many people are out on the streets with knives. But one man in Leytonstone is taking action in his community to try- Everybody in the hood. Everybody with the mindset, I'd rather be, I'd rather have it on me than not have it on me. I'd rather be able to defend myself than not defend myself. And all the gangsters, that's how many. Try and disrupt the wave of deadly violence by taking the knives away from the streets. I'm in East London today to meet Courtney Barrett. 
He has set up Binning Knives Saves Lives, which is an incredible knife amnesty where people can come and drop off anything that they believe could be used as a deadly weapon. He's kindly agreed to show me some of the knives. God damn! He's kindly agreed to show me some of the knives. So these are all the knives we've got. And that's a first. Is that a gun knife? What was that? Four hours. There's uh, around 220, 200. Wait. That's a 34 hours. 30, less than 34 hours. There's uh, around 220, 230, something like that. This is quite clearly, it just says cheese on it. Yep. I mean, this one could do you a lot of damage, though. It, it really yeah. could. This one looks really old. It's old school. It's actually got um, hallmarks on it. But that's that that serrated. That... Yeah. You wouldn't want to get stabbed with that, would you? Is that a machete? Yep, that's a machete. Can we not... Can we focus on the gun? Like, what's going on with that? Um, this is just a nasty piece of work. Um, no one in this country would have any need for this. This is what you cut through the jungle for with. This one here wasn't actually dropped into our bin. Look, it's got a velvet inside. Bro got every piece of jewelry ever made on all silver. This one we holds value, no diamonds. It was actually, I was called and asked to come and collect it um, because the lady couldn't make it to the bin. So I went and collected it just beforehand. Um, when does this would have been on someone's wall? Yeah, I think it's a decorative thing, but yeah. these are the kind of things we're trying to tell people you don't need them in your house because these are the things people, yeah. people get in an argument and come and grab them. The kids might be scared because they've been picked on by a gang or whatever, you know? You don't know. I think so often people think that, that larger knives do more damage, but that's not the case, is it? Um, well, to be honest with you, uh, my, my point of view is that the smaller the knife, the more prone the, the person who's doing the stabbing is to stab repeatedly. Um, so smaller blades can be more dangerous. That makes really sense. Because they, they, they're used more. I've heard that a, a large proportion of knives used are actually kitchen knives. Yeah, um, around about 70% of knives used in knife crime are kitchen knives. People are clueless until we've told them the facts and figures and that. A lot of people just think knife crime is just to do with gangs and on estates and mm -hmm. doesn't concern them. No, yeah, no, that ain't, knife crime can hit anywhere. Angry girlfriend catches you cheating, uh, uh, or vice versa. Man walks in on his girl cheating with another man, boom, knife, bow, 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 and those both kitchen knife instances right there. You know what I'm saying? Kid getting bullied at the, out, outside of his house, like any, anywhere. <laughs> you know, but we've showed them it does concern you. It can happen to anyone, any place, any time, you know? Anyone could be affected. Yeah. And anyone could be carrying a knife, you yeah. don't know. So of all those knives, what are you going to do with them? Um, basically, we're going to make a statue with them. Um, we've got um, Black Horse Metalworks who have agreed to make uh, melt the knives down. Um, and we're going to commission a youth group to make a statue with them. Wow. Um, the statue will be dedicated to everyone that's been murdered by a knife in London in 2019. Um, I've got a doc Anybody know of this statue, if it's, any, if it's made yet? Diagram here oh, on yeah, my phone please. somewhere. Oh my um, god. Say there was 140 deaths this year. Yeah. It's His jewellery might be melted down knives. That'd be dope. 140 love hearts, oh, making one big love heart. Yeah. On a plinth with all the dates and names, etc. Yeah. The majority of the weapons Courtney has collected are regular kitchen knives that you'd find in any home. But there is a darker world of knives out there. Knives that aren't meant for cooking, and they're incredibly easy to buy. Several kinds of knives are illegal to sell in the UK. Knives like butterfly knives, flick knives, even knives disguised as other objects. All legal in America. Though they're illegal to sell, how hard are they to actually get hold of? I decided to try and find out, and went to a well-known online retailer, and with a few clicks of a button, I was able to get some from China. This one's got a transformer face on it. This knife is very clever. This is disguised as a bracelet for all you Transformer fans. It's got the face of a transformer on it and the blade is inside there. But look at that. You could... I don't think that's big enough to hit that, though. No. 
At least not on me, at least, because I'm bigger dude. Maybe a skinny, skinny person, but like a, a bigger person, that ain't going to do nothing. Maybe if you get him under the armpit, allegedly, because it's like, you know, skinny down there, over there. You could put it on your wrist, clip it, or, if you, or flick it open very quickly and use it to do some serious damage. It looks like it's at least an inch and a half long. A lot of thought has gone into the engineering. The fact that with one hand you can, you can release the blade and hold it and repeatedly knife someone, it's, uh, it's, it's frightening. Got to wrap them up well. Butterfly. Look at you know what's crazy? Like as a kid, like I used to want a butterfly knife so bad, but they're like those things are super dangerous if you don't know how to use them. You know, the danger to you and others around you if you're trying to, you know, show off. But like you could buy them at a young age in America. You don't need to be 18, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe, but I know where I was. You could get one. This is a butterfly knife. My God. This makes me really angry. It makes me really angry knowing that our kids can be out there buying this and we think they're safe. This is the, this is the tip of the iceberg. Thin package. This is a credit card knife. I'm not gonna lie, I, f I feel a bit sick right about now because I've just taken out a knife that looks like a Damn, I ain't credit never seen card that. that could be in someone's wallet on any night out. It is a oh, wow. madness. This looks like it could be your Common Garden Stanley knife. Oh, it's oily. Wow. Seen those before. You can see it's really serrated and they're groups of three teeth. These can be bought and be available on our streets. Damn, how many you buy? It's, I'm just, I'm actually quite speechless. I'm not often speechless, but words, <laughs> words fail me at the moment. These knives are all designed with one purpose, to kill. And as we know from the endless- I'll injure, maim. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that these are designed to kill. The only knife that I've seen that would, would be designed to kill for sure it's that flick one. When she pressed the button and it came out. <laughs> that's that's the only one that I've seen. That's for sure. But the other ones, you could, you know. They could, they're designed definitely for something else. Endless headlines. So many of those killed kill. And as we know from the endless headlines, so many of those killed that by one. knives are teenagers. Kids. As a mother. As a human being. The idea of a knife being turned against a child makes me sick. I need to understand what losing a child to violence feels like and what it does to a family. I'm on the way to Leicester to meet Amy Morgan. She's a mum who so sadly lost her son Tyler in 2015 after he was stabbed in the chest. She I heard turned her pain into power and has become a tireless campaigner against knife crime. Amy has joined other bereaved mothers in protest taking action to try and stop more young people losing YouTube, that is pain. Losing their lives to knife crime. We met at the spot where Tyler... Yeah, I remember this story. He was on his bike and, and they got chased on another bike. I remember this. ...was killed. You know what happened down there that night? And then I guess in a way, I suppose you're... Your brain and your emotions are just trying to process everything. And I guess coming here kind of is part of that process, I guess. To think that it's why I had his last moments, yeah. And then we had his plaque done in memory. Yeah. You see, in loving memory, Tyler Thompson, your beautiful soul I and your vibrant smile, taken too soon. I think this was the bike one. In, gone but not forgotten. Rest in peace, Tyler. 10th of April, 1999 to 24th of the 11th. 2015. People forget, people don't care, people move on. He would have been 24 this year. People don't want it, you know, they don't want to remember it all the time, but to us it's so much special. Amy invited me into her family home. She told me about what happened the day her son died. 
Tyler was stabbed twice, in the arm and fatally in the chest. The doctor at the hospital said that where he'd been stabbed at the bottom of his heart, and that's why I couldn't do anything. And then I later found out he'd, like a case survivor, he drowned in his own blood or cardiac arrest, but it would have been really quick. But just like, yeah. I think, I think to myself, like, you know. Maybe this wasn't the bike case. What were his last thoughts? Did he know? You know, did he think, did, did he, you know, did he want me, me there? And I, Guaranteed his last thoughts was mom. Where's my mom? Guaranteed. Because I went, when I was in a situation where I thought I might lose my life, that was my life. That was my one thought. So I, I guaranteed, not to make you feel any worse or make anybody feel bad, but I can almost guarantee that. You know, it does, it traumatize you like that. Especially if it's like a one parent home, you definitely, the last thought. That way. And what about the person that did it? Like, what? He'd already got caught carrying a knife, like about 14 months before we killed Tyler. Um, and apparently had a caution and went on a knife awareness course. Right. On that evening, there was like a confrontation and Tyler and this individual had a fight and the fight had finished and Tyler got on his bike. Oh, uh, this was the bike one. And then he went up to him and stabbed him. Oh. He got... So bro couldn't take his L. I think this is a different bike one. So bro couldn't take his L. In the fight and then um, sentenced to 11 years. He got a year off for being on remand. He got a year off for not putting his through a trial. Nine. And he'll serve half of that. Or he uh, got into Four a years. attorney to try and get him to look at the sentence again. Four and, and a half said years. That Tyler was responsible for his own death because basically they'd had a fight before the incident, which. That's. What? Still, they had a fight like men, and then it was supposed to be done. What do you mean it was responsible for his... If it's more than a kick in the teeth, how can you be responsible for your own death? You know, he, he wasn't the one that was carrying the knife. That's messed up. You know, it's like all his 16 years of life meant nothing to the justice system. His lawyer probably mm -hmm. felt manslaughter or something. Yeah, because he didn't get any easier at all. I know. You have to try and be strong like every single day. And, you know, you just break in inside because it does kill you. It's and he was a minor. So I'm pretty sure the guy who did it was a minor too, so. Died. This is the one that was eight weeks old at the time. So he'll, he'll never get to know him, you know, that hurts. Though Tyler may no longer be with us, his memory is more than alive and the pain of his death more than real. Before I left, Amy showed me Tyler's memorial video. <laughs> okay, shall I go over again? Yeah. Okay, okay, it's about super hot fire in the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. That's messed up. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's a beautiful young man. I'm so sorry. He was doing skits and everything. I need to do something because it's just relentless, isn't it? Yeah. What could drive someone to carry a knife, let alone turn it against someone? I'm at Carney's Community, a boxing club that helps give at-risk young people direction and mentoring. I'm meeting two young men who can't be identified, who both carried knives. I want to understand why they did it and what the consequences were for doing so. Can you tell me a little bit about your time in the criminal justice system? I got convicted for um, stabbing, stabbing someone else. I got convicted of GBH and the presenting of offensive weapon. A lot of people around me were carrying knives. I've got, I even got into, I've even got into fights and arguments with my own friends and my own, my own friends have pulled out knives and I don't know what happened, but at one point it's like pride, pride for me 
And it's like a lot of other people became more important with anything else. No one wants to lose. And what what made you feel, first of all, that you needed to... When I was in Chicago, I'm going to be 100 with y'all. When I... When I when I lived in Chicago, the reason I started carrying pipes was because other people was. It's because I had had this X amount of guns pulled on me, and I was like, you know what? Next time somebody do that, it's up. You know what I'm saying? So my environment turned me to that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your environment is directly tied to how you going to move. Now, sure, I could have been like, nah, man, I ain't finna move with no pipe. I'm not finna move like that. I ain't got to do that. But me, I had had, like, by the time I had got my first one, I had had maybe two, three pulled on me, point blank range. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be playing goofy out here. <laughs> Cause, but, but one thing about it was I could fight, so everybody had to do that. And so everybody was pulling, doing that to me. So I was like, all right, but... That's the table, that's the games we doing? All right. To carry a knife. At that age, even if it's going from where I was, over, like, over, over. Do I condone it? No, but you know what I'm saying? Some of these areas that one of us be in, like, it, it just be that. Over one town, there's people that, if I said, well, I'm from Junction, you never know what's going to happen. Knowing that however many other people carry knives, I felt like I needed one to protect myself. What kept on seeing happen, I'm getting into fights and people are pulling out weapons. Yeah. Have you been stabbed? Um, yeah. Um, funny enough, it was by someone I know. What happened? Be your own people. And then? Made me a bit more wary. And I did actually start carrying a knife more after that. I got permanently excluded for um, bringing a knife to school. I was being approached by other, like, groups of young people and then when I told the school they didn't do anything about it. I wouldn't do anything with it but I just thought like it might scare them so and then they would leave me alone. When you have it you feel like in a way invincible like nothing can happen against you. And it yeah but see my mindset when I had you know what I'm saying that wasn't the mindset that I had. I didn't feel invincible I just felt like the 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 the, the I was on an even playing field now because I know like they didn't stop making pipes when they made mine. So I knew we was on an even playing field now. Y'all couldn't fight. Y'all couldn't outfight me. So y'all had to go, you know what I'm saying? But now what? <laughs> and, but then at that point, you know, it's, it's like you got to walk around. You got to walk around on go all the time like these, like these, like these. You know what I'm saying? I was playing defense when I had mine. And keep in mind, mine was legal. YouTube. It just yeah, gave me a sense of power in a way. Do you think you'd ever carry enough? I didn't feel like it gave me a sense of power. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, it, it took a lot from me. You know what I'm saying? It took, when things moved into the gun situation in Chicago, it took peace away from me. You know what I'm saying? It took a lot from me. It didn't give me no power to hold a pipe. It took pipe peace from me. It took peace of mind away from me. That's what it did. Again? No, I haven't since, and I don't hold it again. In London, City Hall has come under fire for not doing enough to tackle the capital's growing knife crime problem. Sophie Linden is Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime. I challenged her to explain what was going on. There's lots of complex reasons for it's happening, but one of the really big issues for me is the nine years of cuts to uh, the services that help young people and families, sort of glue to society that keeps people together. Youth clubs have been shut down, schools have had millions of pounds taken out of them. So anybody that needs any little bit of help finds it incredibly difficult to find it yeah. and to get it. And the youth clubs shutting down and those programmes means that there's not things for young people to do. And then, of course, we've also had an increase in drug dealing, and there is a real link between drugs and violence. So it's really complex. So there are people that are critical of the Mayor of London mm. saying he's not done enough. It's not just in London that violence has London been... got a mayor? I didn't know that. ...rising in the Home Office research, and you can see that it's across the country that we've got violence rising, and it started in 2014, mm. which is long before the mayor became, you know, got it, became mayor of London. He's put millions of extra money into the police to really get on top and suppress the violence, and he's putting 45 millions into the Young Londoners Fund. What 
what can be done to really tackle the issue? Putting extra money into the police so that they can catch those that are perpetrating the violence. This is the part of the, the documentaries I always hate. Because this, the, it's like, you don't even know what you're talking about, man. That ain't doing nothing. But really, really importantly, we're putting more extra money into community organisations. That'll do it. But... Into voluntary organisations, youth clubs, so that they can work with young people. By the end of 2019, hundreds of people will have lost their lives to a knife in Britain. Together, in 2020, we can put an end to it, but it's not going to be down to the government and police alone. Communities, activists, victims, family, friends and ordinary people need to stand together to say no more for every Tyler. I mean, RIP Tyler, RIP everybody who's lost their life to a knife or any, any way, but that ain't gonna be enough either. <laughs> for every Shayon, for every life needlessly lost to a knife. That sounds amazing, but TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone. I said what I said, man. Enjoy y'all Friday.